It's an interesting question because um, I think there's broad agreement on the fact that there will be significant opportunities, but there's also broad agreement on the fact that those opportunities are not yet realized fully. Um, no one knows exactly what form they'll take, uh, what the killer apps will be um, that really drive the business case. Um, so I think what this really means is that Europe can take a flexible approach to 5G. Um, so the regulator can uh, move in a direction of very clearly defining spectrum license rights and then allowing operators to make the best use of that spectrum. So things like uh, license conditions, um, license conditions, uh, coverage requirements and deployment requirements can be relatively uh, uh, loose and not as strict as they may have been for other bands that would eventually allow uh, uh, network operators to grow their networks organically as the business cases arose um, and to kind of respond organically to market conditions. Um, there are other things that they can do with spectrum rights like uh, allowing licensing uh, or leasing spectrum and spectrum uh, license disaggregation that can also help uh, uh, operators respond in a flexible way to you know, the evolving environment of uh, 5G. Um, the other role for regulators is that they can help coordinate efficient market behavior um, by developing their spectrum roadmap in tandem with or in partnership with the operators and stakeholders. Um, you know, everybody recognizes that the most important thing is to have lots of contiguous bandwidth and low, middle, and, and high um, frequencies. Um, but it's also important not to release everything all at once, not to put it out too quickly before the business case develops for it. So unless there's a strong need for it, putting it out there too quickly can risk an inefficient allocation of the resource because too much uncertainty clouds the judgment at the, at the time of the award. Um, the other thing that they can do is really facilitate uh, harmonization, particularly for smaller countries, uh, in order to make a, you know, give their operators access to a more efficient uh, supply chain. Um, and in certain cases, this may mean that they would be offering target bands that have uh, incumbent operators or some kind of uh, fragmentation. And in that case, they need to be proactive in uh, ensuring that the band really does have that large contiguous swaths of available frequencies. Yeah, uh, so the ones that are on the horizon are um, Germany, Austria, Spain, Italy, Switzerland, uh, and there are a few others. Uh, they're maybe not so immediate, but there are a few others. Um, and I think auction success, we need to start talking about auction success, to think about what the perspective is. Is it the perspective of the regulator, or is it the you know, regulator and governments, or is it the perspective of the operators? And I think that when it you know, if you're talking about a regulator, then you're talking about uh, perhaps just an efficient allocation of the resource uh, and or uh, high auction revenue. Um, when you're talking about operators, what you're talking about is uh, what were prices like, was the uh, allocation to their liking. And so there's slightly different criteria for success. But I think there are a couple things that you can keep in mind, which will kind of um, apply in any situation, for, regardless of your perspective, um, operator or, uh, or not. Um, so we want to pay close attention to whether an existing operator uh, is operating or has licenses in a band that you're offering. Uh, and you want to make sure there are rules that allow that operator to aggregate their, um, their old licenses, their incumbent licenses, with any new licenses that they acquire at auction. And so some careful attention needs to be paid to that. Um, if you don't, then there are some, it's going to affect your auction dynamics and not always in the most pro-competitive way. The other thing to look at is that starting in about 2008, European operators um, handled issues of substitution and complementarities between licenses through CCA package bidding. Um, now there's been a slight move away from that to simpler auction designs, which certainly have their benefits and are good. Um, but when you start using those simpler designs with um, multiple products, multiple bands, or multiple geographic areas, just 
regulators and rule makers need to be careful about the way that they facilitate those substitutions and complementarities, the way they allow, the rules allow uh, operators to switch back and forth between the different products in the auction. Uh, without careful consideration there, uh, you can have inefficient outcomes. Um, so I think they're really important. Um, generally when a government or a regulator puts out kind of consultations or asks the industry in a formal way uh, about their award process or their spectrum plans, um, what they'll get back is a lot of concerns and it's not easy for them to wade through all those concerns which are often conflicting from different stakeholders. Um, it's not easy for them to know which of the most important concerns to pay attention to and which of the ones that are just you know, more generally uh, something that's a nice to have by the operators and not something that you know is essential for an efficient auction outcome. Um, so at a conference like Forum Europe uh, what happens is that they come together in a slightly more uh, educational collaborative environment where those types of true concerns can kind of percolate to the top and be recognized as the real concerns that they should focus on when they go back and enter that more formal process of rulemaking and consultations. So I think it's really positive um, and I think they should continue to happen.